my tools that are completed. You've probably seen some of these fancier ones, which is an example here. This is on a Thompson tool that I built. Uh, you can see that the lamination is very even and equal. And you might be interested to know that a tool like that will start looking like this. This is one of the laminated blanks that I've made. And it's ready for trimming on the ends and the centering technique that I use, which will be in another video. But I want you to see how a lamination like this gets started and a couple of the steps involved in making it happen evenly so that when you turn the handle it will come out looking similar to this one. Now a handle like this will often start with a core usually out of uh, wood that is very solid and straight doesn't necessarily have to be an exotic because you probably aren't going to see it unless you dig down deep enough to expose the core. You see the one on the right is a square core and the one on the left is more of a rectangular. It really doesn't matter how you start out but the rectangular one is more likely to show up in the grip part of the handle as you can see it gets thinner and so a rectangular one might stick out far enough to be picked up when you turn it. The process of laminating the core is probably fairly easy to see if you just look down the end. There's two of them for you. And you'll see that the one on the bottom started out with a more or less rectangular core. And the one on the top is fairly square. As you can see, you start sequencing out with laminations of various woods, fairly thin, that uh, will bring out the diameter more and more with each one. I tend to drive them out to about two and a quarter to two and a half inch square and then I can trim it down usually the handles I won't make more than two inches or so at the maximum diameter but it's up to you if you're going to use this for something other than a tool handle maybe like uh, toothpick holders or oh maybe salt and pepper grinders you might want larger diameters so you just continue out until you get to the diameter that you want part of the trick is getting it equal all the way out from the center so that when you turn it you'll have a nice balance to the final turn piece and you'll get a very nice symmetry. That of course requires that the woods that you use are equal on both sides as you laminate them out and the next part as you can see will be trimming as an issue. The piece on the top is ready to be trimmed to the uh, this section right here is a thin piece of wood that I want to trim these top and bottom pieces to. As you can imagine, that's going to be fairly tricky. When you glue these up, the laminations have to overlap. And that overlap will never be perfect or even. But I've developed a little jig that will make the trimming easier. It can be done on a table saw, and I'll show you that next. Well, now I want to show you how I'm going to trim this laminated blank to the surfaces I mentioned before, which is to trim it flush to this surface and this surface. As you can see, the overhangs or overlaps are uneven, so I can't just put it on my rip fence and trim it off to the blade because then it'll be uneven relative to this. What I want to do is register this surface to the blade. And the way to do that is to build a special fixture, which I've done, and it's this right here. This fixture will, has a rough surface to clamp onto. This edge will ride along my rip fence. But this structure here will hold my blank. And the way it works is that I put two strong one inch long magnets on the blade. I have the blade all the way up such that now when I put the fixture in there and my blank I will register that uh, surface on the blank to the edge of the blade. I set my rip fence up for six inches, put 
the fixture up against the rip fence, run the blank up against those magnets on the, on the table saw blade, and then clamp it down. What, what I have to do now is move the fence out of the way, take this out of the way, take the magnets off. Now if you're going to do something like this, you have to be very sure of your table saw switch. If you're not, I would suggest unplugging the table saw. Now, the way I built this fixture is I set my rip fence up for five inches. That accounts for that one inch of the magnets, and that should register the surface on my blank to the blade. Now I'm ready to turn it on and do the trim. Let's see how it comes out. See, I'm kind of conservative about moving when that blade is still moving. So here's my trim offs, and here's the trim that I've done on the surface of my blank. Now I'm ready to take this out of the fixture, flip it around just on the rip fence, and trim the other edge. And then I'll know they're both parallel, and they're both registered to the core of my handle layer uh, blank. Uh, after a while I'll be selling these blanks on Etsy so you can look for them there and you can use them for handles or whatever other project you might have. Thanks for watching.